Hey guys, what's up? This is Seth Williams from the RE Tipster blog. In this video, I want to show you a really cool trick I learned about not long ago from a couple people in the RE Tipster club, Daniel Bear and Nathan Springer. And I'm actually really surprised I didn't know about this before because I've been using Agent Pro 24-7 for a long time and there's this feature built into it that makes it really easy to pull a very specific type of list. And somehow I just missed this all along, but as soon as it was pointed out to me, I knew I had to share it with you guys. And what I'm about to show you actually works both on Agent Pro 24-7 and on SiteX Pro, which is just a separate site that offers a lot of the same stuff with some different pricing. But uh, both sites are owned by the same parent company, which is Black Knight Financial Services. What I'm going to do here is log into both sites. And just to keep this less confusing, I'm going to do this whole thing in Agent Pro 24-7. So once you're in Agent Pro, you would go up here and click on the Farm button. And what we're going to do here is we're going to generate a mailing list based on a very specific geographic region. So let's go ahead and just kind of pick a random spot on the map here. Uh, let's zoom in to this property here. Let's say that I own this property and what I want to do is I want to contact the neighbors so that I can let them know that the property is for sale and they can buy it for me at a discount if they want to. What I used to do is using Agent Pro I would click on this property here, I click on this one too, this one too, this one too, this one across the street, probably this one here and this one here, and I would just pull all of their mailing addresses and send all of them what I call a neighbor letter, just saying, hey, I've got this property that's right here. Here's all the basic information. I'm about to list it for sale soon, but before I do, I wanted to contact you guys and see if you would have any interest in purchasing it from me at a discount. And sometimes this can be a super effective way at getting a property sold really quickly because a lot of times these neighboring property owners are highly interested in purchasing the property right next door or across the street from them. However, However, there's a couple problems with this approach. First of all, it's kind of a slow, time-consuming way to click on each one of these individually and copy all the information down on each one. And it's also leaving out a bunch of other potential buyers who might live, say, over here, or maybe they own the property over here, or maybe they've invested in a number of properties in this neighborhood, but they don't live anywhere in the area, and it's still worth our while to contact them as well. Well, in that case, we've got a couple tools over here that we can use to draw a polygon or a circle around whatever specified area we want and we can pull all the mailing addresses for all of these properties. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom out here and one way to do this is to click on this circle right here and once we do one left click it's going to create this circle and we can just drag it out and capture the mailing addresses of every property that falls inside the circle. So say if we wanted to go like this far out, all I'd have to do when I want to stop is right click. Now it's captured all these properties in here. We can go ahead and click on count only and it's got 98 mailing addresses there. So there's not really a magic number you need to use for this, but really however many letters or postcards you want to send out, you just want to keep that in mind and factor that into the equation when you see this. And then once you find the number that you want, all you got to do is click on view records here and it will show you all of the names and addresses of these properties and essentially you can get the mailing address of each property owner whether or not they live in these houses so say if there's like a rental property owner where they own one of these properties but they don't actually live there you can get their mailing address so you can contact them through the mail but before we go to the next step I want to go ahead and clear this out because there's another method I want to show you where you can draw a polygon rather than using a circle and the reason this might be helpful is say if you want to target a more specific area than just a general circle, you can do that with this. So we go ahead and click on this right here. And again, we just start by doing a left click. And let's say we want to get this whole area here. So like this block here, this block here, and this section right here. We can go over here and do another left click. And then do another left click here. Another left click here. And then draw it over here. And again, every time I'm doing a left click, it's just creating a new point on this map. Another left click, and then when we get all the way back here, once we want to close the loop, we have to do a right click on our mouse. And then that's going to capture this specific area. And then we go through the same process of doing count only, and then that shows us how many addresses are going to be showing up in that area. Now, another cool thing about this is you don't necessarily just have to use this for the purpose of sending out a neighbor letter. You could also use this, say, if you were looking to buy properties in a very specific area and you wanted to 
contact these people about potentially purchasing their property, not selling them your property. Let's say in a hypothetical example, we wanted to contact all the property owners that owned land along this 131 highway that goes over here. And the reason why we're contacting these people is because we want to buy land so that we can potentially put an outdoor advertising billboard on it. And when land is zoned commercially and it's along a highway and the local township will allow it, that's typically some pretty ideal conditions for that type of use for vacant land. So say in that example, if we were trying to reach those specific types of property owners, so we could go ahead and click on this again and just start drawing this polygon so that it captures all the properties along this highway like this. Kind of goes up here, up there, and of course you can go as far as you want, but I'm just going to stop there for this example and then we would come all the way back, make sure we capture all these properties here, over there, and then we will close that loop right there. And now we've got all these properties here. We can go ahead and click on count only. And this has given us, again, right around 100 properties. That seems to be the magic number today. But anyway, you get the idea. So once we've captured the area we're looking for and we know what the count is, we would just have to go ahead and view records in order to see those. However, something else I want to show you is in this example, like I mentioned, we're looking specifically for land that is zoned commercial because we need to be able to place a billboard on the property and we can't do that with residential properties. So if there are any residentially zoned properties on this list, we don't want them because that's not going to serve our purpose. What we'd have to do at that point is go over here and and click on this and then we're going to click on here where it says property type and we're going to start by selecting everything but we are going to specifically exclude properties that we know we're not going to be able to work with so government public use we're most likely not going to be buying properties from the government so we'll uncheck that we're also going to uncheck SFR that's single family residential and residential vacant land because again those are residential and residential is generally not going to serve our purpose some of these other types may or may not apply but I'm just going to leave the rest of those checked for now but once that's done we can go ahead and click count only again and then that brings us way down to 13. So based on this area we selected and the other specifications we made up here there's only 13 properties that potentially fit what we're looking for and say if we had drawn this area around the highway in a much larger stretch then obviously we'd have a much larger number there but either way hopefully this just helps illustrate what these tools can be used for in terms of either sending out neighbor letters or sending out direct mail campaigns for the purpose of of purchasing properties in a very specific geographic area with some of these filters applied to them potentially based on what types of properties you're looking for. So there's really a lot of power here if you understand how to target the specific areas you're looking for and how to use these filtering criteria that apply to you based on what kinds of property owners you're looking for. And once you're satisfied with the count, you just go ahead and click on view records. And assuming these are all the people you want to send mail to, you just click select records and then name your list. Just call it example list and then click on OK. Then we'll click on export right here. Doesn't cost anything extra to include all the information. So we'll just go ahead and click on that. Click OK again and then export file has been created. We can download this. It comes as an Excel file. Go ahead and open this up. And now here we've got our list which we can then filter further and manipulate as we need to. As I mentioned, you can do all the same stuff on Site X Pro. All you gotta do once you're logged in is go up here to the lists section of the site, and then you'll see a very familiar looking screen where you can do all the exact same things with these tools. And it works pretty much the exact same way I just showed you over on Agent Pro. One other thing I will mention is that the Black Knight Financial Services database does not necessarily have current up-to-date information on every property owner in every single county and all over the country. And before you use any of this information, you're going to want to verify that the data you're using is actually you know fairly recent and updated and you can check that on both websites if you're using site X Pro all you got to do is go down here to the footer area and click on coverage and then you just go ahead and click on the state that you're pulling your list in and then you can find wherever that county is and it will show you when that database was last updated so for example I'm looking here in Kent County I'm recording this as of October 17 2017 
2017, and this information was last updated on September 22, 2017. So that is less than a month old, and in my book, that's good enough. If I was trying to work in a different county like Isabella County or Huron County where the information hasn't been updated since 2013, that is definitely a problem. That's way too old, and I would never want to rely on information that is that far out of date. So that's definitely something you'll want to check before you start using either one of these services. And over on Agent Pro, if you want to check this same thing, all I got to do is click up here on Tools and then click on Geographic Coverage. And you'll see a very similar thing where you can click the state and then find the county you're working in and see when it was last updated. Anyway, that's just one other thing you'll want to double check before you start pulling these lists and using the information. Personally, when I see lists that are more than like 60 days old, that's when I start to really question whether or not I want to use it. But most of the time in most states, I think you'll find that the information is reasonably up to date. If you do want to use Agent Pro, uh, you can go ahead and click on subscribe now. And they've actually changed up the pricing quite a bit over the past year. But whatever this uh, checkout page looks like when you get to it, there is a partner ID and I do not get paid for this. It's just a discount you can get if you want to use it. All you got to do is type in CFGRSH like that and you'll click update and it will automatically take 10% off each one of these prices. Depending on how much mail you send out, usually one of these three is a good fit for most people. The plan I'm currently using actually isn't even available anymore, but it's very similar to this one right here that provides a thousand records for 72 bucks a month. So that's basically the one that I use. But if you don't need a thousand records a month, then obviously do 500 records or whatever it is you need. But uh, once you got that all set, just go ahead and click next down here then click next again and then next again and then just fill out all this stuff. One thing I will note when it comes down here to real estate license number, if you're not a real estate agent, that's okay. You can still get through this screen. All I got to do is put the word investor in here and then it will let you go to the next page. If you leave it blank, you won't be able to proceed. But once you put investor in there, it should let you through. Hopefully that makes sense. Thanks again for watching and thanks again to Daniel and Nathan for showing me this. Really appreciate that guys. And if you're watching this, I wish you all the best with your next direct mail project.